Well, oh, praise the Lord. Welcome to New Day Christian Center. Here in the church and there on the internet, God bless you. As I was sharing before the service, God sends His Word and heals them and delivers them from destruction. That means this, very literally, and particularly my friends in New Zealand, that whatever country you're at, there's no distance in the Spirit. There's no time in the Spirit. There, there, there's no walls in the Spirit. As the Holy Spirit moves on Pastor T.C. to share, to preach, to exhort the mighty, never-failing Word of God, right there where you're at, no matter what country you're in, you can be healed. You can be born again. You can be set free. Your whole life can be set on solid ground if you receive the Word by faith in your heart and believe the Word. Let God's Word go deep into your heart today. Let God's Word touch your soul today. Let God's Word take all the bondages, all the fears, all the regret, all the condemnation and guilt, and wash it away by the blood of Jesus. Believe the Word and you will be saved. Believe the Word you can be healed. Believe the Word you can be set free. Let the blessings of the Lord touch you no matter where you're at today in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, open up with me to Matthew chapter 4. And look at somebody and say, He's not going to teach long. He's not going to teach long. Oh, come on, let, let the world know we got more than one person in here. He's not going to teach long. He's not going to teach long. But He's going to teach good. He's going to teach good. Because God's going to teach him. Because God's going to teach him. Amen. Matthew Amen. chapter 4. Now I'm going to recap very, very briefly because we've been doing a series on the wilderness experience. Now the first thing I want you to understand today, church, is this. None of this has anything to do with whether or not you're saved. Matthew chapter 4, and then we'll get to the specific scripture in just a second. None of this has anything to do with you being saved. You're saved by grace through faith, not by works, lest any man should boast. You cannot earn your way to heaven. You cannot merit the right to enter into heaven. You are saved strictly by a gift of God. And you have to believe that it's a gift from God to receive it. You're saved by grace through faith. Not of your works. Lest when you're done at the end of your life and you're standing in heaven, you say, look at what I did. You will not boast in front of God who made you. Amen? Amen. Amen. You can't do it. So when I'm teaching this wilderness experience, <clears throat> this is not earning your salvation. This is for brothers and sisters in the Lord after you've been born again, after you've come to a knowledge of God, after you begin to enter into the things of God, then for those people, those brothers and sisters in the Lord, the sons and daughters of God, the sons and daughters of God. Already a son, already a daughter. i got to make sure you understand that, lest somebody out there thinks I'm preaching legalism and works. You cannot. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. Christ took the law and nailed it to the cross with him at the cross and earned all the righteousness for us took our sins, gave us His holiness. Took our transgression, gave us His righteousness. Amen? Amen. You are right with God when you're born again, a new creature, a new feature, new attitudes. Everything becomes brand new inside of you. But you still have this brain. Now listen very closely. There's the works that I'm talking about are works of righteousness, not works for righteousness. You don't, you don't do anything to earn your right standing with God. Jesus did that. But now that I have a right standing with God, now that I love God, now that I'm on the path of God's purpose in my life, I, because I love Him, do works of righteousness, not works for righteousness. 
Do you understand the difference? Amen. In other words, you might work to win over your fiancé or your girlfriend to cause her to become your fiancé. Put on my best suit, even brush my teeth, which I won't normally do. Comb my hair, which I'm not in the habit of. And even put on cologne, which is completely out of step for me. I'm doing all kinds of new works. Why? Because I want to be accepted in her eyes. Right? Amen. Those are works for righteousness. Once I'm married, I've won her over. We're engaged. She's, then we get married. Now she's legally my wife. We are bound together. I don't run around with other women. I stop beating holes in the wall when I get mad. I don't cuss at her if she does something that I don't like. I don't stay out all night. Why? Why do I stop all that stuff? Not to earn anything. She's already mine. But because I love her, I change my actions. Amen. Same thing in your relationship with the Lord. Jesus came and paid the price for me to make me righteous. Now that I love Him, I try to study the Word and live the way that's pleasing to Him. Jesus is the head. We are the body. The body is supposed to be in harmony with Christ the head. Amen. 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 Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. If Jesus walked the shores of Galilee, healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out devils, what's his body doing? What should his body be doing? Is the body going to be doing something than the head? The body's in co complete unity attached to and going with the head. They work together. Amen? That's why he said, the works that I do, you shall do also, and greater works than these, because I want to be with the Father. Not works for righteousness, but works of righteousness. Not works to get into the kingdom, but works and manifestations of the kingdom. Are you getting this? Amen. So, listen to me very closely. Everybody that wants to fulfill their purpose in life, be what God created them to be, whether your vision is great or small, you are going to go to the wilderness, every single one of you, unless you're just perfectly comfortable being saved, turning your back on the love of God and going and doing the same thing, just the same old lifestyle. Which, honestly, folks, let me tell you something right now. I would challenge your salvation. If you say you got saved and you've lived 10, 15, 20 years, never even concerned about being in harmony with God's will in your life. Amen? Amen. If you're going to flow with God, if you're going to harmonize with why God made you, you are going to end up going to the desert. Now remember we looked at Moses. Moses was 40 years old. Got in trouble in Egypt. He was Pharaoh's stepson or uh, step grandson. Fled out to the wilderness. Lived in the wilderness for 40 years. Out in the middle of nowhere. Had to run away and leave everything. Look at somebody told this. Everything. Everything. Well, Pastor, what will it cost for me to be the person God wants me to be? Everything. I think it's real serious when you actually get to start talking about Christianity. What's it going to require? Everything. How much is it going to hurt? A lot. Well, how can you say that? I thought Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yes, he does. But there's a warring that takes place. And that warring is between the Spirit of God and your flesh. Your wife, your wife might walk in and say, Baby, I, I know you used to do that when you were single, but please don't burp in the living room and put your nasty old sauce on the coffee table and drop Cheetos all over the floor. I see that's the way you used to live. And to change your lifestyle, change your habits into something that's more sanitary, more presentable, is going to be painful. Because you like hanging out with your nasty socks on the table. You like 
throw a cheese puff at your face and hoping some of them hit your mouth. That's just the way you live for years. Then your wife comes in and says, please, blah, 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 and there's a tearing down between that which is godly and your ungodly habits. But if you're going to be a good husband, what's going to be required? The one that's not house broke has to be sent out to the yard. The nasty old animal habits have to be sent outside so that the human being can cohabitate with the woman that he found. The spirit and the flesh war. They never get along. They never will get along. The only thing that will happen is now and then you'll, you'll subdue the flesh long enough to perform to get a reward and then your flesh will rise back up. So, in the desert, after he ran away from everything, after it cost him everything, once he was in the desert and he learned how to feed sheep, remember we covered that, key number one, the one, first lesson Moses learned, he was, a, he was the shepherd of his father-in-law's sheep for 40 years. The first lesson you're going to have to learn to go on with God is to care for God's people. Period. Might as well just mark it down. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Why did Jesus come? Because God loves people. The number one burden on God's heart is the salvation of his human beings. God does not desire that any man should perish, but that all men come to the knowledge of salvation. The first, primary, foremost care of God's heart is the salvation of souls. What did Jesus live for? I came to lay down my life. Jesus' first concern was the salvation. I, I didn't come for those that are healthy. I didn't come for those that are righteous. I came to seek and save that which was lost. What burned in God's heart? souls. What burned in Jesus' heart to the point it knelt into the cross and he gave up his life? Souls. What's supposed to burn in your heart? What I, if I'm supposed to do the works of Christ, have the mind of Christ, have the heart of God, I live for people. Now this isn't what you hear in most churches, but this is Bible, people. Now your flesh isn't going to like that. What do you mean? Because you've been raised if you don't blow your own horn, nobody will. If you don't take care of yourself, nobody's going to watch out for you. If you don't promote yourself, nobody else will. This is a dog-eat-dog -dog world. If you, if you don't get out there and make it happen, they're going to step all over you. Everything you've learned and everything you've been taught is opposite of the heart of God and the ways of the kingdom and the way of the Spirit. Absolutely opposite. I'm a Christian. Are you? We read some scriptures at the beginning. Be transformed, renewed, completely separate and different than this world system, how this world dresses, how this world looks, how this world acts, how this world behaves. Transform yourself. Change yourself. Most Christians wouldn't recognize Jesus if he walked in with a red hat. There's a whole antichrist spirit moving all across America right now called the seeker-sensitive church. The seeker-friendly church. Listen, it's an oxymoron, people. They take out the word sin. There's a the guy with the largest church in America won't say sin in his church. Will not say that Jesus is the only way to heaven. Won't do it. It was on national TV and the host couldn't pry it out of him. Well, what if a, when an atheist died? When he, if this guy asked this, this pastor, which I'm not judging him, but I'm telling you we need to get back to the Bible. Because we don't recognize Christianity anymore. How can we please our Father and please Christ, Christian, Christian, how can we be pleased to him when we're completely oblivious to everything about him? Amen. The host, this is on national TV, asked him, this is a 
pastor of the largest church in America.